Welcome to FM Evolution. I'm your host, Sean Black. And today, I'm really excited, I have Susan Foster with us. She's a communication coach. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a great to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Uh, it was really cool just to get to know you, meet with you, and talk about this. It's such an important skill set, uh, I think, in our industry to have for people. Uh, so I'm really glad to have someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about what you about yourself? I spent 17 years at a large semiconductor company. Uh, I started off as a software engineer, and I became a project manager, and then a people manager. And during that time, I developed an interest in communications, and I became a communications coach for both internal customers and some external customers as well. That's awesome. Uh, I, this is something that's come up on our show multiple times and in communication it seems like it always comes up when there's breakdowns um yes. and so i to be clear like what is like for you what is your definition of communication to me communication is the exchange of ideas and information and the key part of this is the exchange part yeah i agree if, you, if you're standing out in the middle of the woods talking to a tree that might be effective for some things, but you're not actually communicating to every, anyone at all. And the, rever the, the, the other part of that is that if you're speaking and you're not receiving any input back mm -hmm. from the person you're talking to, it's very disconcerting and, and it's very difficult to do. And it's a key part to have an effective exchange I've had that happen to me. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to trees. So. <laughs> Just say, no, no, that's great. Um, I think that is, you're absolutely right. The effective exchange of ideas, it's, it's huge. And if we don't really understand how to communicate clearly to the other person, uh, we're not going to be able to get done what we want to do or to accomplish. Um, for you... <sighs> How do you think that, how, do, how can good communication skills make a difference? I mean, obviously just being able to talk to each other is important, but overall. Well, unless you can effectively communicate any of the ideas that you have, any of the contributions that you might be able to give mm. to the project or to the company, they're not gonna get heard. You can have them in your head, and if you don't verbalize them well, you don't communicate them well, they're not going to go anywhere, and probably neither are you. Another thing is that it reduces misunderstandings. So I'm sure we've all been in the situation where I believe that you said this, you believe I said that. Oh, yes. <laughs> and we're both sure we know what went on, mm -hmm. but there's no meeting of minds. So being able to reduce misunderstandings is a really key part. It gets everybody on the same page when there's effective communication, whether it's being in a project meeting and talking about what the risks are, what the schedule is, whether it's management communicating to employees about the, the what's going right, what's going wrong, what's gonna change. These things are really important and a company can't go forward and grow without effective communications internally. It's a big deal. I mean, it happens in our industry, communicating with everyone from the technicians to, for us as vendors, we have to communicate to our clients, which are you know restaurants and hospitality uh, and retail organizations, and they serve thousands and thousands and mm -hmm. thousands of people. So the communication is so important. That's why I really want to have you on the show to kind of talk to that. Um, for, for you, what would you say is like key factors in improving your communication skills and facility management, like planning, listening, awareness, that type of thing? So I think one of the most important things is, is that active listening, mm -hmm. the ability and the practice of saying, this is what I think you said, is that right? Right. That's a really key question to get everyone on the same page. And I've realized over time that I actually don't read minds yeah. You don't read minds. I'm pretty good. <laughs> right. You're not yeah, as no, good as no, you I, think. No, I know, I know, I'm not. You're right. So so having that active communication and making sure that things are understood clearly is a really key part of it. Another part is good preparation. Yeah. So if you're walking into a meeting with a client, if you're walking into a meeting with a manager or a group of employees, if you don't know what the purpose is of that meeting, no one else is going to get anything out of it. If you know what it is and they don't, 
they're not going to get anything out of it either. I just had a lot of those meetings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my experience is that when you don't know what you're talking about or yeah. what the purpose of the meeting is, it's really long. This is really long. It's really long. So another key part to me is to set an agenda, have a clear purpose, be boring and say, this is what the purpose of this meeting is at the beginning and keep it on time because no one wants to sit in a long meeting. Everyone's happy when the meeting ends early. ends. (laughs) Woo, 15 minutes around. Exactly. (laughs) Here's 15 minutes back. I love that. And if I could get all those 15 minutes back, imagine what I could do with that. Honestly, someone once told me, you know, tell them what you're going to say, and then say it, and then tell them what you said. And it's kind of, that's kind of your process, but keep it short. Exactly. You know, to the point. Exactly. Yeah. People's attention wander, and especially in this day and age, there's so many distractions. It's so easy to look at your cell phone, mm-hmm. to get distracted by email. Yes. <laughs> yes. And having a, a short, brief, to the point meeting with an agenda really really helps yeah what do you think this is kind of off topic but what's what's the best meeting you've ever been to for you kind of the best you, meeting yeah I've ever like been the to? shortest the quickest is there someone that comes to mind like yeah this guy was great or this lady was really awesome to be honest yeah. um i was a member of toastmasters oh, okay and and that's where i picked up a lot of the things that i've been practicing as a communications coach and in the Toastmasters group that I was in, they had an agenda that had exactly what you were doing in five minute increments. Oh, wow. And they stuck to it. And it was excellent training for the rest of my work that you can do this, people will stick to it, and you can get done on time. I think that when you're able to do that, it builds so much more trust in the people that that are working with you. The people who are in that meeting, it, 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 it just, if you can get in structured, they understand what's going on and they're out, mm-hmm. it's huge. Mm-hmm. And if you say to them, this will be a 15 minute meeting, and, you stick and to it's it. a 15 minute meeting. Instant credibility. Right. Yeah, and then the next time, and then the next time, the next time, yeah. And you get an, a reputation of being effective. Yep. And y- you get more done. Now, the flip side is, if you're gonna run a meeting like that, you have to prepare for it. Yeah. And you also have to be able to control it. So that's another piece of it because people love to talk. Oh my gosh, yes. And talking is not necessarily communication. So you have to be able to shut down the side conversation, get everyone back on topic and keep moving forward. And that's a skill set. I've been in, I, for me, I've been in sales and marketing meetings and uh, for 25 years. And there's always the one guy who's like, will not stop talking. <laughs> We do not care about the surf today. Just, you know, I think it's so not off topic. Let's go. Yeah. I've had those, lots of those. And, and it takes, it takes a bit of yeah. confidence and a bit of assertion yeah. to say, to wrangle them in. Stop. We need to finish on time. Yep. That's great. Do it later. Good input. Let's take that offline. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's really, really smart. The, um, one of the things I kind of want to cover is approaches and like strategies to influence others um, based you know on important issues and I think this is important it's a, it's a leadership challenge but I think communication wise this is a big deal yes and I would say start with the facts the incontrovertible facts that everyone can agree on our profits were down last quarter by this mm-hmm. amount when we did an analysis this is what we saw or whatever the whatever the facts are link those facts to the conclusions and as you're you know if it's an interactive meeting listen to everybody and incorporate their ideas into the solution because when people have some input even if it's a small piece of input they feel more committed to whatever the action is that's coming out of the meeting and one of the things that that is difficult to do but very effective is to get everybody's agreement that even if the solution isn't the one, isn't their number one choice, yeah. maybe they disagree with to it, but they will commit to the success of the solution. Because the last thing you need is someone undercutting. Oh, that's the worst. Because their ideas weren't heard, yeah. they don't feel like they got included. So listening and, and being able to include them 
being able to communicate why maybe their solution isn't the one that's chosen at the end can go a long way to getting them to commit to whatever the solution is. I think that including those people, and, and that's a skill set. We were talking earlier, mm -hmm. that's not something you can just do. Uh, no. uh, you have to learn how to to incorporate other people's ideas. Even if you don't, you're not gonna use them. They need to be validated. You know, They need to feel like they're a part of the process, just like you said. If they're not, whoa is the good possibility that they're gonna to try to derail what you're trying to do. Right, and yeah. it, it's something you can practice and it's something you can improve. But if you have the sincerity that you, you really are listening to them and they feel that sincerity, then that goes a long way as well. Yeah, I agree. That, that helps you get the time you need to build the skill set. Yeah, that's huge. No, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that up. There are, I mean, important issues. This kind of brings me to explaining things that are very complex. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit this, about this a little bit earlier, but I think, you know, coming, especially if you're in your background and working in, into it and having, I'm sure, multiple complex issues to deal with, mm -hmm. what's your best approach to dealing with this? So if you have got a complicated issue, first of all, if you don't understand it thoroughly, yeah. no one's gonna understand it when you explain it. And I find one of the ways to understand something thoroughly is to ex to have to sit down and explain it. Yes, agreed. The other thing is, as you're communicating it, people retain more if you present it in multiple ways. So visuals, graphs, charts, Gantt charts, verbal, written. If it's something, you know, preparing people ahead of time yeah. so that they're walking in knowing where they're going, what having some background on it, you know, a little bit of homework. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's going to always have the time to really dig into it before, but it's helpful to present that material. And then keeping really good notes on what happened and being able to send them out afterwards. Because you've talked about it, you've showed them, but now you've got something that they can refer back to. I think that's so, I think it's brilliant. Because there are people learn and they communicate in such different ways. Mm -hmm. There are people that just need the time to process information uh, before they get to a meeting. And if you give them that time when they get there, they're going to pay attention. They're going to they're going to be able to engage a little bit better, and they'll have be, they'll be able to share feedback. Right. And and the other important thing is if important decisions are being made in this meeting mm -hmm. and you don't write them down, no. then we have that problem where I thought A, yep. I thought B. We both think we're on the same page and we're not. That was a great meeting. We got it all done. <laughs> what was it again? I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's exactly right. That is exactly, exactly right. Um, well, thank you, because I think that's a big deal. And I think in a lot of the organizations that we work with and the listeners are, um, you know, in these situations that they're very complex. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of different mm -hmm. people, a lot of different departments, a lot of different scenarios, and some of them are extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they can affect store closures, and uh, there's a lot. Sometimes there's very sensitive information, especially with restaurants and what's going on. So it's really important for people to kind of understand and have a strategy with that. I agree. Um, what? If you could... This is where I need help, and, and we talked about this. <laughs> I need some, I need uh, some some good recommendations, some exercises for to help building the communication skills. So, so, hey, listen, I assume it's just like working out. Mm -hmm. I, I need to do that too, but <laughs> but but when it comes to communication, you got to flex them also, right? So, right. What, what would you recommend for people out there? So I've mentioned Toastmasters earlier. Yeah, and that's part of the the whole practice part. Um, it doesn't, you know, I, I'm not a member currently myself. I, I was for 10 years, and after 10 years, I thought, I, I can't possibly I do enough. one more speech. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing left to talk about. <laughs> hey, after 10 years, that's, that's it, pretty good. It was. Yeah. But it's a great place to go and practice in a environment where there's nothing at stake. Mm -hmm. um, at work. Lots at stake. There's lots at stake. Yeah. In a public speaking club. You go, you get the practice, you can goof up. Yeah, wah, You can wah. make mistakes. <laughs> it's okay. But you get better at it. Uh, one of the things that I had to get a lot better at was at impromptu speaking and speaking up in meetings. 
So I had that classic problem where I thought of a brilliant thing to say five minutes after uh, the moment went by. The moment's passed, yeah. The moment's passed and it just doesn't work anymore and, and you don't wind up saying it. So practicing that even in a completely different context helps you quickly formulate what you're going to say and be able to say it and have the confidence to say it. So doing it mm. is really helpful. Speaking in front of an audience helps get you over the jitters. Right? Right? You don't oh you don't you can't do that by yourself. You have to have an audience. Another thing is, and this is horrifying, <laughs> record yourself. <sighs> it's the worst. It is the worst. Yeah. I you don't know what you sound like, you don't know how many times you say um or uh so until you actually see it. Yeah. And then you it's it's awful. It but, is awful. I want to But you learn a lot. Yeah, you do. You do learn you a lot. You learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing that you can do, and they do this in Toastmasters, is we use a lot of filler words. Um, er, so, you know, uh. If you get one of the dog clickers and you have a friend who you can, a good friend, yes. probably, you can click each other when you start saying filler words and start to realize when am I saying them, how much am I saying, and and start noticing. Not Not the callers. Not the collars. No, the little <laughs> clicker, like click, click. I think the collar would be good for me. <laughs> <laughs> little, little therapy. Who's <laughs> shocked? That'd be good. I would never that, do that it again. It seems a little yeah. extreme. It might be. Well, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Just low settings. Yeah. <laughs> clicker works for you. Okay, we'll go with clicker. All right. Uh, so, so understanding when you're doing it, mm -hmm. it's a little odd when you start listening to someone who is very purposefully not using filler words because it doesn't sound natural it, to yes, us. Right. Yeah. Because no one does that. No one in a normal conversation there says, um, doesn't use filler words. Um, so. But when you're communicating, yeah. especially when you're doing a prepared speech, it's really important. No, I agree. Not to use a lot of filler words because it. Well, it becomes tough to listen to. It's very hard to listen to, and I can remember one occasion I was listening to an executive. He was not prepared. There was two hundred people in the audience. Ah, oh, so rough. He was stumbling through the entire presentation, and I thought, I wonder how much money they've spent just on the paycheck of everyone sitting in here. Oh, it's tremendous. And we are not getting anything out of it. That's see, that's horrible. I feel bad for that guy. <laughs> But it happens. It does happen. But it happens because no one actually does these steps, right? They don't practice. They don't do this. And then they get up there and they, they freeze up. Right. Yeah. And they're not prepared. They're not prepared. And it feels awful. Yeah. I'm not doing that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Note so, to self, practice. Yeah. That's right. So communication is really a mix of t the technical communication skills. Everyone can get better at this using interesting language, using vocal variety where you get soft and loud, high and low. It just breaks it up. Listening to someone speak yeah. in a monotone is really difficult. Oh, it's so tough. So the technical skills are things that everyone can can improve on and understand. They're, they're pretty accessible. Then there's the content. If you're speaking about something everyone's interested in, of course, oh, it's so much so easier. So much easier. So much easier using a little bit of humor, using a little bit of personal stories, that helps bring people in and make that connection so that you can communicate with them. And then finally, there's the practice. Practice, practice And if you practice. don't have the practice, the previous two things don't really count for all that much. People who practice communications, they may have started off as a good speaker and a yeah. good communicator, but they'll get great. Even, even better. People who start off with a lot of challenges and it's difficult for them, <clears throat> they'll get good. Yeah. They will. Yeah. I've, I've seen it happen. Every single person I've ever seen work on communication has improved. I'm working on it. <laughs> Thank you for coming by. This is so much fun. There, I feel like, and we talked about this earlier, I think there's like a thousand things we talk about on this subject. Mm -hmm. um, but I think these are really valuable for the people and our listeners that are in, you know, going through these positions and holding these meetings and trying to excel mm -hmm. their careers. We didn't even talk about that, but just being, we know that being a good communicator is going to accelerate your career. It is. It's huge, right? It is. All right, Susan. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, 
normally at this point I would ask someone what's next for them. But instead, I want to throw you a curveball, something I wouldn't been wanting to ask people as we kind of uh, grow with the show. Um, I am fascinated with what people are reading. Oh. <laughs> so if you have something, I would love for you to share it. So I just finished the uh, a biography of Louis the Fourteenth. No way. Yep. And I'm reading a biography of Leonardo da Vinci. Oh, so that's really interesting. Yeah. See, I love I love that stuff. I often, for me, I'm I'm very. Um, and I talked about Jack Welch. I love Jack mm-hmm. Welch. Great books. Uh, but I'm very focused on those type of books, you know, leadership and mm-hmm. and I know it's important to take time to read other stuff. So that's awesome. Yeah. Highly recommend it. I guess then. Was it good? <laughs> well, the, I, I'll say that the the. Um, uh, Louis the Fourteenth was a really interesting mm. book, and, and really set in context. Like, wh- what? Why did the French Revolution happen? Like, what led up to this? Yeah. And, and the political situation of is so different from what we see today. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's really interesting. Um, Leonardo is. It's it's kind of a it's an easy book to read before I go to sleep. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Practice that too. That's yes. right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, it was awesome to have you on. Uh, we'll definitely, maybe we even have you back on another time to go into some more details. Okay, so that much would be covered. great. Thank awesome. you.